Good morning everyone. So welcome to the next tutorial in the JMeter series and today we're gonna touch upon preprocessors in JMeter. So the topics we are going to cover in this session are <coughs> sample timeout preprocessor, user parameters preprocessor, HTML link parser preprocessor. So these three kind of preprocessor are something we're gonna discuss in this tutorial but before I move ahead just want to know I explain what is preprocessor. So preprocessors are some kind of actions which you want to execute before your sampler makes the HTTP request or whatever request you're sending to the server. So for example I have a HTTP request that is going on to the server. I want to make sure that I have some kind of actions that I need to perform before that request goes. So that are preprocessors. So as we just discussed that we're going to touch upon three preprocessors that are sample timeout, user parameters and HTML link parser. So we'll start up with the basic preprocessor that is a sample timeout. So we'll move, up, move back to the JMeter and we're going to add a thread group here and then you can add a sampler that is HTTP request and you can hit Google server home page right then you can add a listener table so I can increase the number of users to say five okay so before I explain what will be the use of my preprocessor that is a sample timeout one I just want to run this out so that we see what the response is coming so if I execute it click on no. So you can see my sample time is 306, 296, 284, 291, 293. So now these are my five sample timeout. Sample time, right? So now I can add a preprocessor that is sample timeout and it asks the sample timeout in milliseconds. So if I see five of my samples here I see that 306, 296, 284, 291 and 293. So for example I, I'll clear out the drawings. So if I go ahead and in my sampler I put like 295 milliseconds. You can keep it below or up whatever you want. So I have put a sample time out of 295 milliseconds, which means that any of my request which takes more than 295 seconds should fail, right? And it is very clear from what this timeout says. It should fail, right? Okay. So now I go back to my request, clear out the response and run it again. So you can see that two of them are failed. One with 296 as a sample time and another with 295. And all of them, all of the others are below 295 so that is why they are passed. So you can use your sample timeout if you want the response to come in a particular time. So this, was, this will help you to set a benchmark. For example, your client has given you a benchmark that your sample timeout or the sample response should come below 300 milliseconds. So you can always use this preprocessor, right? Okay, so I'll delete this one now. results table. So the next preprocessor is users parameter. User parameter is very simple. For example if I add here even I don't need to execute the script to show you this because it is very simple. So for example this is variable 1 and user 1. You can add a variable from here you can add user from there. So for example, your variable is email. So you can configure here that your user1 would use this email and your user2 
2 will use this email and so on you can add your users so if you're lo using it for say login into a web page you also need a password out here so you can add a variable you can say password for example password 01 and for this email ID you have password 02 so what does this means now you can pass the parameters with the request right so email you can specify the parameter email cross close the brackets and for username or the password you can add another variable that is password and you can specify password variable here sorry password right so I had two variables so let's put the username as two so whatever server name I give here maybe it could be something like a login application so your first user will use this credential and so I'll highlight this out this is user 1 and this is user 2 so this credentials will go into your this request where you have specified the variables so this user defined variables or user parameters preprocessor are very simple it just allocates the variable to the values before your request runs right so now you have the most important one that is HTML link parser so before I explain what is HTML link parser I'll just create a dummy to request thread group one say HTTP request one second sampler HTTP request I'll server, put the server name later on you can add a listener here results three okay you can add another thread group I mean sorry another sampler HTTP and another listener so what does HTML link parser does so HTML link parser HTML link parser extracts the response from this request and it can be used dynamically for request 2 not like this you have to add a HTML link parser to this request preprocessor HTML link parser so now the response from here can be used dynamically into a request here so for example HTML link parser extracts all the links that are given on a page and that links can be used in the subsequent request that is followed for example now I put the server name here for example there is a website called bookmyshow.com so I can put as in bookmyshow.com and the home page so by the sequence first this request will go to the server and response will be captured here then this HTML link parser will extract the response from here and will use it in this request right now let's delete the drawing when I execute the test case it will be more clear so this request is going to bookmasher.com and results will be stored here now you have another request that will be going to the same server path so here is a trick now you have to use dot star dot star means it would pick any random link I mean whatever path is written here 
when the request goes to the server it gets appended here for example if you don't use the link parser your request becomes your complete request becomes this now right path is appended at the end of the server URL so you have used HTML link parser will be, which will parse all the link out from here and you have used dot star it will pick a random link on in.bookmasher.com page and make a request out there so if I execute this out fail you may come across this scenario also where one of your request is failed and the other is passed so what you can do is you can check the request tab it went to HTTPS and it went to HTTP and you got a response here uh, no response here it's not loading out here actually it is very slow page not found that means that it has shifted to HTTPS so now you can change your protocol out here HTTPS and the same here HTTPS right clear out the results and execute it is failing again so let us debug the cause what it is showing page not found what is the request it is double slash out here so I can check what I have done wrong oh I have put a slash out here which I do not need to so debugging you know testing by debugging is the best way to solve out the bugs on your own before looking out on stack overflow maybe some other portals for these results so I'll just clear out the results and execute it here so first of all what it did it executed this request on the book my show home page first and this is the response data from which this HTML link parser has passed out all the links and see what it has click double click it's still gone to the home page only so I can use another iteration out here so that two iterations are made and let's see how it goes now first is pass, second is pass so now you can double click to see the request is going to the home page and uh, request one I think it does overloaded the geometer it's taking a lot of time to switch between the request what's the problem So you can see the URL out here. It has turned to bookmyshow.com slash years slash 2017 events. So it would pick any random URL, whatever you put it out here in the request. So in this case, it has put a random URL on bookmyshow.com page. So if I change the iterations out here to say two for the same user, and then I'll try to execute it clear that and execute so it will run for two times I just want to check what request is being made to the server so click on this request and this has gone to the home page and the other one the second request 
and the second request has gone to the Bangalore events page. So you have seen that two iterations of the same user have picked randomly one one link each from bookmasher.com page and hit the request out there. So this is the purpose of HTML link parser. So that is all for today's session. We'll be covering post processor in the next tutorial. Thank you.